안녕하십니까? 대구 S치과 박영진 원장입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Park Young Jin. I'm with the Daegu S Dental Office. I'm going to talk about bite registration in this course. Regarding the bite taking, I'm going to talk about the contents, the definition of bite registration, the objectives and reasons for proper bite registration, when do we need to record the bite and the bite materials, and various methods of taking a bite record in implants in this order. Bite registration. Using proper bite materials, it is registering the maxilla and mandible relationship. For well-fitting prosthesis fabrication, we need to get a good impression and we need to have accurate opposite teeth model and the skilled technician should provide precise lab work. Taking a good impression is connected to the accurate opposite teeth model using the appropriate bite registration. So, bite registration is as important as good impression taking. Objectives of a proper bite registration. Proper bite registration means in oral cavity, occlusal adjustments should be minimized in time and effort. And the anatomical crown shape should be preserved, reproduced in the lab and it should reduce the damage to the mechanical properties of the prosthesis. It should reduce chair time, increasing convenience for both patients and operators. These are the benefits. Because of those, we need to record bites appropriately. Then, when do we need to record the bite? Is it absolutely necessary to record the bite or not? If you understand it, you would be able to record bites appropriately. The relationship between the upper and lower is connected through the bite taking. So the upper and lower jaws need to be checked whether they can have a context on one plane. A plane can be determined with the three widely distributed contact points, which is called a tripod. If there's a no contact points in the anterior region, in the posterior region, if four stable contact points exist, that should be checked. Let me explain using a clinical case. In this patient, number 13 and 15, 24, implants were placed and prosthesis were planned for them. Do we need to register the bite? Of course, in this patient, number 17 and 27, and in the anterior region, the patient has stable contact points. Therefore, a plane is defined in a tripod shape, a plane is determined, so bite registration is not needed for prosthesis of the implants. Because a plane is already determined. If there's no tripod, there are some cases where bite registration is not absolutely necessary. As you can see, in the anterior region, there's a severe wearing or attrition, so there is a wide plane in contact between the upper and lower. Or in this case, in number 22 and 32, if there's a partial cross bite, even though there is no tripod contact points, 
model, you can see the wide uh, context. These are the exceptions where byte registration is not needed. Then, when do we need to have a byte registration? At number 13 and 14 and 16 implants were placed, a four-unit bridge is planned. Of course, we need to take a bite here. At number 26, uh, there is a stable contact point and uh, there's another one in the anterior region. But except those two, there's no other contact points. And the most posterior implant position, occlusal contact should be made to create a bite registration in a tripod shape. Let's look at another case. In this patient, in bilateral posterior regions, stable contact points are achieved, but a tripod, there, there's no tripod, no three points, therefore, a stable contact point should be created in the anterior region. So, a bite registration is needed to create a tripod. In this case, there's only six anteriors remaining in bilateral posterior region. Number four, six, and seven, three implants were placed. In the anterior region, a stable occlusal contact is needed. As you saw in the previous case, in the most posterior region, stable contact points need to be made to create a tripod. However, if there's only teeth in the anterior region, especially in the lower anterior region or when anterior teeth have severe mobility, it is hard to get stable contact in the anterior region. And then at four points in the posterior region, stable contacts need to be created. Therefore, tetrapod, four stable contacts need to be obtained. And the bite registration is needed. Up to now, I've talked about bite registration, whether it should be done or not. When does it need to be done? When teeth are there? What about edentulous cases or a full mouth implant case or full arch implant cases? Of course, bite registration is needed, but when there is no occlusal context between the upper and lower jaws in the remaining teeth, we need to adopt the concept of dentures. How do we take a bite for dentures? Occlusal rim is used, so we use the occlusal rim to acquire the relationship between the maxilla and mandible. We use the same method for implants, occlusal rim, silicon, or hard wax is used to take bites, the indexing bites. So this is how the bite was taken. Up to now, I talked about when bite registration should be done and when not, and how to do the bite registration. Let's look at the bite registration materials. They include ZOE, wax, silicon, polyether, and resin. Various bite materials are available. For the materials, in order to take bites appropriately, 
these conditions should be satisfied. First, accuracy and stability over time. And the volume should be maintained over time, free flow and easy to manipulate for the operators. Lastly, after registering the byte, the byte should be checked. So verification is important in terms of the material properties. These are the criteria and uh, commonly used the four byte materials are compared and listed in this table. Wax, overall, they turn out to be poor. However, silicon, polyether, and resin turn out to be good and excellent. The most widely used materials, silicon and resin. Silicon materials, this may be the most widely used material clinically. It satisfies all the before mentioned the conditions. If used properly, it turns out to be a very good material, but there's one precaution. The silicon bite materials are elastic, so it moves when it gets thick. Therefore, if the bite material thickness is more than 3 millimeters, it can be inaccurate. So, when you use silicon bite materials, it should be used with a rigid material, and then relining, and a wash technique should be used to take a bite. That's important. Next, resin bite materials. As you know, Duralay and Pattern resin are available. Resin bite materials are made of resin. It has the disadvantage of resin polymerization shrinkage. So when you use the resin bite materials, these need to be understood. 80% of all shrinkage occurs before 17 minutes. Within 3 hours, 95% of all shrinkage occurs. After 30 hours, there's no measurable changes. Therefore, if you use the resin bite materials to take a bite, one or two days prior, a resin bite block or bonnet should be fabricated. Relining or indexing should be used for the bite taking. We looked at a bite materials, and now let's have a look at how bite registration is performed, actually. According to the impression taking method, bite registration method can vary. Let's have a look at it from the impression taking method perspective. First, implant level impression taking. An abutment is connected, a bite block or bite jig is used using a wash technique with silicone resin. Recently, impression taking bite jigging can be performed simultaneously using a bite impression coping. Bite index abutments, the high healing abutments can be used to take a bite after impression taking. For abutment level impression taking, it's just like a direct impression taking using a bite tray. In this method, the impression is taken without taking a bite per se. So bite taking can be omitted. A bite block can also be used to take a bite with a wash technique. 
Resin bonnet or impression coping can be used to take impression followed by, by taking simultaneously. I'll talk about the full mouth implant restoration cases or multi-implant cases or identitalous cases. There are no contacts between maxilla and mandible, so wax cream, silicone or wax can be used to, to take index bite. Among various bite taking approaches, I will talk about the several representative ones and I will talk about how to take a bite in edentulous cases. Most commonly used uh, method, abutments are connected, a bite block is connected, silicone or resin are used to take bites, rigid material is made into a block and using a washing technique, a bite is taken. That is the most commonly used approach and a very stable option to use. Let's look at a case. In this patient, an old bridge was used from 13 to 17. 14, 15, and 16 teeth developed the problems, so they were extracted. Implants were placed at 14 and 16 and the prosthesis was planned for them. The second surgery was performed four to five months post-implant placement. An implant level impression copings were connected and impressions were all taken together from three to seven. And the impressions were sent to a lab. As you can see here, custom abutments and bite block were fabricated and sent back to the clinic. The bite block and custom abutments received are connected intraorally and silicone bite material is used to take a bite using a wash technique. After taking bites, occlusion was checked on the model. The prosthesis fabricated by a lab is sent back to the clinic and it is tried in a set like this. The patient had Implants covered by national insurance, the health insurance at number four and six. So PFM prosthesis was fabricated. When PFM prosthesis is used, as you can see, the metal bite is very much preferred, especially the PFM prosthesis over implants can create a lot of complications, the chipping problem. If the occlusal surface is made of metal, a lot of chipping complications can be reduced. Next, bite impression copings. Bite impression copings have bite taking and impression taking functions together in one unit. As you can see, over the implants, bite impression copings were connected and bites were taken and impressions are taken. It is simple to use. At this time, the bite space should be 1 to 2 millimeters after connecting bite impression copings. Using bite materials, bites will be taken together. So as I said before, if it gets too thick, it is prone to errors. Therefore, the bite space should be 1 to 2 millimeters by adjusting the height of the bite impression copings when connecting them. And the bite is taken followed by impression taking. When there are teeth, you can use the approach, as I said before, for the bite taking. As you can see, in this case, how can we take a bite? As I briefly mentioned before, there are no teeth contacts. This is a full mouth case or edentulous cases. Wax cream is used to take Bites. There are 10 implants placed um, in the maxilla and 
in the mandible, six implants in the posterior region, and six anteriors in the mandible will have a prosthesis. There are no contacts at all between maxilla and mandible, so wax frame was fabricated to provide contacts between the maxilla and mandible. This time, when taking bites using wax rim, vertical dimension, vertical space and horizontal space and CR concepts need to be respected. Using the concepts wax rim and silicone bite indexing approach is used for the bite taking. A temporary is fabricated first. After fabricating the temporization, an adaptation period is provided for the temporary occlusion. The temporary crowns, the temporary bridge play the role of teeth. And um, when transitioning from temporary to the final prosthesis, bites can be taken, as you can see here, using a bite block or silicone material with the wash technique. So, wax rim is used for temporization using a temporary final prosthesis can be fabricated by taking the bite. Now, the final prosthesis are tried in and set. Final prosthesis are set. As you can see, for full mouth prosthesis or full mouth implant cases, bite taking is very important. Placing implants properly, and if you are confident in implant surgery, but still some of you may feel hesitant about the full mouth cases because of difficulties in aligning the prosthesis. If you cannot provide the proper bite taking, patients will feel uncomfortable about the bite. And if bite taking is not obtained appropriately, prosthesis can be fabricated in an unintended way. Therefore, the number of implants and uh, the scope of restoration, if the scope or the number of implants get bigger, we need to well, consider how to take bites more carefully. As I mentioned before, if you can take bites properly, patients like this, when they visit us, and if you decided to go for the full mouth implant the prosthesis, you will be able to provide a stable treatment results like this without major difficulties. I have talked about uh, bite registration. There are the various areas, uh, factors you need to consider for bite taking. And uh, this is a very simple introduction to bite taking and abbreviated version. If you want more detailed explanation, please come to the offline master course. I believe it will address a lot of your questions. I've talked about bite registration. Thank you for your attention.